Good afternoon. I am Cesar Delgado from Back Roads of Illinois podcast on Google Podcast and YouTube with Joe Camp for today on the show. Good afternoon. How are you today, Joe? Hey, good afternoon. I'm doing pretty well. It's Friday, almost the weekend here. We did have a bit of a disappointing crop report that we'll recap here for you. But overall, doing well. Hope the same for you. Glad to be with you again. Thanks. Thanks for coming along with us for this afternoon. Could you explain to the audience about this grain report on today from USDA? Sure, the monthly crop report, the August crop production and WASD, the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates reports the crop production report was an important one because it included the first survey-based look at U.S. corn and soybean yields. It also included the first round of estimates for the state-by-state -state yields. And on the WASD balance sheet, we had a few different items adjusted like domestic demand and a few pieces of interest revised for the global balance sheet. Overall, it was a negative reaction here into the close with lower prices after an initially bullish run, uh, at least for corn and soybeans, because of what was a friendly uh, number for corn yield, also another friendly number for soybeans, at least relative to the pre-report estimates. They came in lower than expected, slightly so, and did reflect that we've had some, of course, crop stress to date here. At the end of it, though, I think the USDA analysts kind of padded the balance sheet enough, gave themselves some room that we could still have supply cuts later, uh, but yet being conservative uh, or a little bit skeptical about demand overall. And we saw that with various uh, revisions lower for, say, corn exports or additional soybean imports. Uh, so all in all, after that initial run-up, immediately after 11 a.m. Central, I think the buying interest faded and then the computers kind of jumped on it and they tried to take futures <laughs> to some of these key lows. <laughs> we talked before the show about the weather. Did you talk about the hurricane? Weather, obviously the focus here at this point, I think we'll leave that crop report in the rear view pretty quickly and start to look at the forecast and see what it means for now these yield estimates going forward in the next couple of reports. I mentioned this was the first report where we had surveys from the farmer on what they think the crop looks like. But going forward, we'll also have data from the USDA crop scouts and eventually the harvest samples coming in. And that's where I think, at least for the, the corn side of things, uh, we could still realize a lower crop that it might look better than it, it can yield, given the stress that we had in uh, some of those critical phases like pollination, uh, that the damage is done in a big way already on corn. Now, being August, uh, it looks like soybeans could still finish strong, but I see the forecast and it does lean a lot warmer and drier for most of the country all of a sudden over these next couple of weeks. That's actually the opposite of, yeah, what we feared could be a shift towards much wetter weather and it still could be the case. And so you talk about the hurricane influence. There's uh, more and more input from meteorologists, climatologists that suggest this could be a very active hurricane season. And I think back to uh, seasons, you know, four or five years ago where we had that issue for a couple of years in a row, really, uh, that hurricanes came uh, right when we were ready to harvest the crop. It was particularly, of course, a source of damage for the south and uh, the mid-south on along to the southeast coast. Uh, but that's a risk that we have is that all of a sudden 
uh, in a lot of places it, it's dry, 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 and then it just won't stop raining. Not only uh, do we have the potential for active hurricanes, but that's something linked to what is also the wetter trend that comes from El Nino, which is currently developing uh, in a big way here. So we'll keep an eye on weather, of course, coming into the weekends. That's what's going to determine how we open again next week will be who gets what or not over these next couple of days. And then however the, uh, the, re the rest of the forecast looks. That's crazy about it is mixed is about the commodities markets and this time for this year. Yeah, there's so much going on, whether it's these, you know, yield forecasts and the crop reports, the crop condition ratings, and you're still watching weather and then trying to keep track with the headlines. That's a, been a big deal for wheat where we have been, you know, briefly bullish when we hear about all of this escalation of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, but that we then don't really observe any material follow through on cash grain prices that might uh, help us earn some extra trade demand. So there's a lot, yeah, being mixed up for, for commodities, as you say. How are the weather in Illinois? Better. We had another round of showers move through a big a chunk of the state here this morning, and it looks like we could have another couple of rains here uh, before that trend does look to uh, turn back drier and warmer. Like I mentioned, we're of course you know much better off than we were uh, a month ago or a month and a week ago. We remember that right at about the Fourth of July, there were some showers that broke in, and uh, actually you know shifted it from there being fireworks shows canceled because of uh, the dry weather toward to, to all of a sudden you know d displays and events being disrupted by heavy storms so that was a welcome uh, shift but at the same time I think it's still potentially too little too late and I get into that when I start to fine-tune my own expectations for yield going forward thinking that in between the rains leading up to and then in between the rains in July, uh, we did have uh, quite a bit of stress on this crop and it spent a lot of energy trying to survive rather than build out ears, at least for corn. Soybeans have a lot of potential um, as always with this better August weather, but we've got a lot to live up to too in both terms of uh, meeting up with last year's yields and you know trying to catch up with where the USDA is at even for us. How are the green market for today right after the post bell? So we had December corn futures down nine cents to 487 and a half. I mentioned the technical slide that developed with the uh, bears trying to hit that recent low at 481. Uh, they did not reach all the way there. We had a session bottom at 483. Maybe that's a positive sign. We have been down here several times around roughly this 480 to 490 mark and uh, selling interest has subsided. So we'll watch for that as we start next week in terms of the chart action. And then for soybeans, they were down 10 and three quarters cents to 1307 and a half. And like for corn, uh, testing a key area of support just below $13, but uh, uh, eventually settling above that mark Wheat futures in Chicago down another 10 cents at 6.53 and three quarters. It's so all around a pretty negative close to the week here. Mm -hmm. Kind of fits with two, the recent technical slide that we've been in now for several weeks over. It's certainly fit with the shift in the weather potential, uh, but I think also, too, that we've had a changing dynamic in outside markets where the dollars rebounded again. The stocks have been shakier. Uh, oil's back up higher today to try to help out, but not much a real notice on that front. Ultimately, it just felt like path of least resistance was was lower, and so 
the selling resumed um, on that accord. But yeah, a little, little bit of a negative trade here. Double whopping. Yeah, double whopping all around here. Double digits down for soybeans and wheat, almost there for corn. I think we've we got to just feel like it, we're relieved to get out of this uh, week and and away from this crop report and have could you know potentially some room to bounce from here after we've been down for so long for so you know so quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, and the negative negative finish, no doubt. <laughs> I might have to ask you about the NOVA report on this month. How are we going to get see the full report on beans crash of the report? <laughs> that crush report for soybeans is going to be another important one. I think the last one might have felt a little bit weaker than anticipated, but overall, the crush demand is still a real big bright spot for this market. We've been talking about, you know, a near record run up for uh, crush margins for the uh, product spread. Uh, that means we've got soy oil and soy meal in the lead to help pull beans higher. I think there's a lot of optimism on the meal side. You know, exports have been doing OK. We know that there's less to go around after Argentina had the big drought this last season. And uh, for the biodiesel side of, of its link to soy oil, it, it, we've got so much optimism still leading into even this upcoming harvest about how much we're going to ex expand crush capacity. So, yeah, that, that crush report's going to be another another important one for the market. How about our four legs friends with the highest print for the feeder, Joe? The cattle, wow, I think you'd have to call them pretty resilient. Now, they actually closed lower today, and with corn down, that's a bit of a bearish sign that maybe the futures are ready to take a bit of a breather. But again, they've been resilient, and they haven't really made a, a large correction lower like i thought they might already you know by this point and so back up near the contract highs for the most part that's a reflection of a really strong cash trade especially for live cattle when you have cash prices perking up again this week and the board's still discounted uh that's you know a positive sign and when you're talking about maybe finally starting to rebuild the herd and with uh, you know, alongside those higher uh, fed cattle prices, I mean, that puts still pressure on the cash demand side of it for feeders. Um, overall, you know, we're going to look and see what the corn does next week. We know the feeder cattle are sensitive to price action there. But again, because we closed a little bit lower, I'll wonder if we don't have a little bit of room for downside before we still know um, that the fundamentals as tight as they're going to be leading into the fall on the supply side um, that we don't have room yet for even higher prices eventually. How about being hog and cash market for Midwest? The hogs are gonna be interesting here next week as this nearby August contract expires. So it's mostly confer converged with a pretty a strong cash trade above $100 per hundred weight. It's a different story down to these back months, though. There's a more than $25 discount down to December futures. And so that is a reflection of expectations that we're going to build production here leading in to the fourth quarter of the calendar year. Beyond that, I think we can be bullish on the supply end of it again, though. We know that recently there was heavy sour herd liquidation and that that should show up in, in lighter numbers early next year. I, I'm pretty optimistic about overall demand. You look at um, uh, domestic consumer interest in pork, and, and it's come up after, you know, finally there being a, a 
significant passing on of the lower prices at the retail level. And then exports, that's a really positive storyline. I think both based on volume and revenue, pork exports are on record pace again so far this year. Uh, so yeah, not as bad as, as we've been in this pork market. A recent run up has uh, been a good thing, at least for the producers. Finally, what are the yields for this point in central Illinois near Champaign between Bloomington? Yields, again, I think improved certainly from what we feared a month ago, but not out of the woods yet by any means on uh, still maybe having to see some lower estimates. Now, today's crop report gave us our first, again, state-by-state -state look at the yield estimates and for corn the number for Illinois uh, pegged at 201 bushels per acre. That's down 13 bushels per acre from last year's statewide record. But maybe some more reduction in store for us. Again, when, I, when we get into this crop, I think we could be at risk of finding that we've got you know smaller than desired uh, ears and that they just haven't filled out uh, like, like we have uh, uh, in these years where we've really really had bumper crops. But yeah, some reflection in the stress made to date, I think still potentially more, especially if uh, this forecast holds to where we're back to warm and dry for the, maybe the rest of this month. Ed, would you like to go to tell the audience on the cash market for central Illinois? I think, you know, seasonally, uh, better than average, we could call it. And at this point, that means that there are still pretty strong bids for uh, getting old crop corn out of the farmer's hands. Uh, that'll fade as we get closer sure. to the new harvest, certainly. Uh, but that goes back to what we see, have been observing in terms of really robust domestic processing demand. And so there's a lot of strong bids, thankfully, from the ethanol plants that have in some way offset the weakness that we've seen along the river because of a sluggish corn export program. Uh, we did see a, an export sales announcement to Mexico. And anyway, that could be a sign that uh, maybe the worst is over in terms of the corn trade demand of, and that we could have the export bid heat up a bit as we come into the new uh, you know, fall season. And then that leads me into the fall bids, which again are slightly better than anticipated, uh, but nobody in terms of the buyer buyers are going to get too excited yet until we have a little bit of a better handle or get closer to this um, this fall harvest. But I think uh, uh, holding up in a way that you know there are some opportunities for old crop and and wrapping that up if you haven't already, and for uh, in some places. Uh, getting a start on, you know, securing basis uh, and uh, hedging for the new crop, although we would be, again, largely patient on wanting to wait for some better prices before we're too aggressive again on uh, making new crop sales. Do you want to the farmers about harvest season for this fall? Yeah, I think that goes back to what I uh, just mentioned about patience, and I think I'd want farmers to uh, generally at this point not be too concerned about prices getting away from us on the downside. We've got to be careful. I mean, I, I don't want to act like uh, we can't uh, really fall out of bed if, if things turn more negative in terms of outside markets and, and even the weather, which we cross our fingers for, is going to uh, continue to improve from here. It's just that I'm skeptical about some of these supply side estimates for now, and that again, that we are are you know so quote unquote out of the woods on uh, on having crop stress. You know that would be realized in lower yields. So I think we could have some sort of retracement that would uh, take us back towards higher prices into the five dollar range again for December corn, and at that point uh, we can look closer at hedging. Uh, for uh, for for sales that need to be made ahead. Thanks again for coming to the show for this afternoon, Joe. Yeah, thank you for having me again. This has uh, been what three times now I've joined you, and I enjoy it. Uh, good 
good uh, time to recap what was a pretty important report day, and I'm sure we'll be able to catch up again soon. You're welcome to join us. Thank you. Have a good weekend. This is Joe Camp on the show about commodities markets. You've been listening to Back Roads of Illinois. I am Cesar Delgado. Have a great weekend. Thanks a lot. Talk to you next time.